My name is Jack Gescheit, and the label I'd use these days for myself is environmental art photographer. I've been a photographer for over 22 years, and both of my parents were professional photographers, one living, one dead now, uh, out of New York City. And I've been doing commercial work for almost all of that time in the last nine years, the Tree Spirit Project. The Tree Spirit Project is my name for my collection of photographs of people naked and vulnerable with trees. The Tree Spirit Project, what I just call Tree Spirit, uh, it was inspired by one magnificent tree, a giant tree in Marin County, uh, California, where I now live. And I wanted to make a photograph with it, and I wanted to put a body in this giant tree to add scale and drama. Um, and I love tree climbing myself, so it's sort of photographing the thing that I would do. And I made that photograph, and people loved it, and I started just making more and more of them. And within six months' time, it became a project, and then people who were in the photographs had these amazing experiences to tell about being naked in a tree. A simple thing like that became this very powerful emotional experience. People are naked in the photographs for several reasons. One is uh, when people are naked in the photographs, they are present. It's, you can take me in a shirt and jeans and sit up in this tree that's behind me and I can kind of hang out, it's no big deal, it's kind of a goof, whatever, or someone makes a Michael Jackson joke these days. Uh, if you take off your clothes, well, there's lots of jokes there too, but to actually do the experience and when everybody around you is serious about it, it makes you, um, well, the meditative word for it is present. You're not thinking about yesterday or worried about tomorrow. And that changes how people are in the photographs. The first photographs were absolutely naked. I knew that I wanted, um, it's, it's just more pure. I mean, anyone who's done uh, any kind of photography with nudes at all, um, there are no clothing cues. It's timeless, especially for my photos. I wanted to make images that could have been made 50 years ago or 75 years ago, and you still have uh, clues from haircut or if someone's got tattoos or doesn't have tattoos, but clothing is a huge amount of um, who we are or who we think we are in our society. Take off people's clothes, or better yet, remove clothes from 20 or 30 people in a photograph, and they're unified. They're all human beings, rather than, oh, that guy's in a pair of old jeans, and that guy's got a plaid shirt, and that guy's, where does he wear a suit for? You just go in different stories when you see clothing. Take it all away and everyone is unified. I've been making tree spirit photographs, uh, people naked with trees for, gee, uh, I guess three or four years, five years, I don't even know. Um, and then my girlfriend's father showed me a story about uh, the Berkeley Memorial Oak Grove, where uh, that was in the New York Times. People had been living in the trees for a year to try to prevent them being cut down. It was the last stand of coast live oaks uh, in the flatlands of Berkeley, and the university was gonna cut down the entire grove and put up a gymnasium. So young people, God bless them, were living in the trees, and there was a whole ground crew that was feeding them food, and Berkeley is this weird dance of they didn't just you know, shoot them out of the trees like they would have in Texas, let's say. So they wanted them down, but they wouldn't forcibly remove them, and it got national and then worldwide attention. I found out about that, went over there looking at the beautiful trees, feeling like, yeah, I really do want to make an environmental impact as well and save trees, and asked whether making one of my tree spirit photos there would help them. They said yes, and it began from there. So Berkeley, Memorial Oak Grove, my photograph there called Last Stand, was the first time I made uh, what I would call, well, later, a political photo. It wasn't just a, a pretty photo to celebrate how beautiful trees are and what they do for us and how fun it is to be in nature, but that also that my artwork could have environmental impact. Ansel Adams for me is an inspiration of you can actually have environmental impact. You can save trees, you can save resources and land and national parks with your photographs. 
and that was my inspiration for The Last Stand in Berkeley. I have many favorite photos. I don't have one favorite photo of my tree spirit photographs, and for different reasons. Uh, one favorite because it was the earliest and it was kind of the start for me of tree spirit, uh, which I wasn't calling it then, is uh, Granddaughter. And it's one woman in the crook, 10 feet off the ground of this giant live oak tree. And she's just, just nestled in, nothing elaborate, but it's just very tender. And she's dwarfed by this gigantic tree. You get the scale of this thing and it looks hundreds of years old, which it is. Another favorite photograph is Last Stand, the photograph in Berkeley I spoke about earlier. And that's because there are so many people in it and it was just a total gift. I, I planned that months in advance and I didn't know what the weather would be, didn't know what the light would be. I mean, I scouted it out a couple times and I had my best guess, but it could have poured rain that day and it would have been a completely different photograph. Lots of people participated. Everybody was really into it. It was also a political photo for a cause. And then there were people living in the trees who, by my invitation, descended into the photograph. So I'm pointed up off the ground, into the sky, and these people were actually out of frame and they stripped naked and came down and four of them, if you'll see in the center of the picture, are hanging from the trees, one of them upside down on one leg. That's how comfortable he was in the trees. And it's just super dramatic and the website doesn't do it justice because it's this big and it's, it's a big picture with a lot of drama both top and bottom in the frame. And then great light, sunlight came in from behind and illuminated some of the bodies. Just love that picture. And then a third favorite photo I would mention is called Douglas Fir's Dance and it's a color photograph. A lot of my pictures are black and white. Most of them are black and white. I tend to shoot black and white because I want to unify body with tree and that for me works much better black and white. But this was just, it's a green mountainside in Marin County and the fog rolled in so it's kind of not so brightly colored and it just, it screams green. It's these young Douglas fir trees and people are, instead of being kind of quiet and in repose, they're jumping about like banshees. A totally um, high energy picture and I did a long exposure and zoomed a bit so it looks like a Photoshop effect, but it's done in camera, not that it matters. I love the effect and a very different energy and color. Douglas first dance. One of the most common questions I get is, how do you get people naked in your photographs? How do they trust you and why would women come and why would men come? And the simple answer is they look at my website, treespiritproject.com, they see 50 pictures, 60 pictures, this body of work, and they respond to them. They like them and see that they're artistic, they're well-crafted, it's not you know, just nudity or sex for sex's sake or nudity's sake, and they say they want to be in the pictures. I, I had one woman who saw a showing of mine and she called me up and left a message saying, I want to be, I've got to be in one of your photographs with my one-year-old. And that had never happened to me before, where someone insisted they want to be in one of these photographs with this, something as vulnerable as their firstborn child. And if you look at the work, you, you see they're innocent, they're sweet, they're heartfelt, it's safe to be in them. The two general categories of my work is one or two people, so it's much more about those people unless I turn their head away and then they become anonymous again. And then there are group photographs where if there are 20, 30 people, not that everybody realizes this, that, but if you're in a photograph with a lot of people, you become anonymous. Just human beings, you don't see yourself anymore. I've even had complaints of people who are uh, more free with their bodies and being seen and they complain afterwards that they're too anonymous. Like, where am I? Why did I come all this way and you can't see who I am? But, but the usual concern, of course, is that people will lose their jobs or it'll be on the internet. So it, there's a huge amount of trust involved and I really um, create, I would say, a safe, if not sacred space when I make these photographs whenever possible. So I found also that I can use these photographs which um, get attention because of the controversy around nudity to bring attention to an existing environmental cause. That's what happened for me in Berkeley and that's why I'm sitting here in Charleston, my third visit here, because I learned about the angel oak tree, a magnificent hundreds year old gigantic tree that stuns anybody, even non-tree lovers. And when I made a photograph and said I'm going to bring naked people to it, it became a big deal and it made the papers. TV coverage came out the day we did it. The police came. We were almost all arrested, but we weren't because we were peaceful and we had a calm, sober, serious political intent, which is to call attention to the tree. Don't cut down its forest. It's been a magnificent gift for me that I can combine photography in a way to actually make a difference in specific um, instances where trees are threatened. By uh, ill-fated planning, poor development, I'm not anti-development, but it needn't be you know, cutting down the, the lungs of the earth, which is our forests. My photographs are, I think, 100%, 99% natural light. And while it's, I mean, I've been on shoots over the years as a commercial photographer and could bring lighting trucks and run long cables to generators to get them far away from the shoot. 
Uh, for two or three good reasons, I don't do that. And I work with just natural light. Uh, one is I want the photographs to look natural. I don't want them to look like big bank lights. And there are skilled National Geo photographers who can add light and you're not sure how they've added the light. And if I were to add light, it would be done like that. So it's not calling attention to the technique. I usually am rushed for time. Either it's cold, uh, the police might be coming. Occasionally I can do a shoot where it's very remote and I have time. And then the other issue even there is the trees are so huge. It would take a huge amount of lighting equipment other than if I just take a flex fill and kick some light in on the subject perhaps. But ultimately I just love the look of natural light. I'll scout something in the morning, early and late. Once in a while I'll shoot midday if I want, you know, dappled light or high contrast light and I want to maybe hide the subject. Otherwise I'll try to use low light early or late or I'll shoot backlighted like right now there's sun behind this tree. So I'll um, expose for just um, open shade and then let the rest either burn away in the background or be an edge light or backlight behind. Natural light is not what people think, oh, that's just easy, I don't bring anything and I just take a snapshot. It's always, always looking at your subject matter and seeing what looks good. Sometimes I've seen a tree and I say, you know what? It's just not getting light at any time of day that works or it's buried in a forest and I can't shoot it without doing some elaborate lighting setup. But a natural light photographer is just as skilled, I like to imagine and proclaim, as someone who's working with multiple strobes, it's just a whole different talent set. It's ultimately looking at your subject and seeing light. James Robinson taught me, shoot what you love, shoot what you are passionate about, shoot what you will shoot because you don't give a hoot for the money. That's actually how you'll make your money. It's a paradox. So, I mean, that is my advice, man. That, that's been my experience and I've seen it before. Shoot what you love and all the rest will come. And if there are people out there listening who have a specific tree or forest that they think would benefit with the attention that a tree spirit photograph can bring, I'm thrilled and honored to talk with them and see whether it would be a fit.